When cobalt-60 atoms decay, they turn into nickel-60 atoms, which are stable. But not every atom in a sample of cobalt-60 decays at the same time. It turns out that if you start with a large number of cobalt-60 atoms, exactly half of them will decay in 5.27 years. Cobalt-60 has a half-life of 5.27 years. So let's say you start with 100 grams of cobalt-60. After 5.27 years, one half-life, half of the cobalt-60 atoms will have decayed and you'll have only 50 grams of cobalt-60 left. Your sample will be made up of 50 grams of cobalt-60 and about 50 grams of nickel-60, which I've represented here as green dots. I should point out that cobalt-60 atoms and nickel-60 atoms have approximately the same mass, since they're both made of 60 nucleons in total. Neutrons and protons have approximately the same mass. There's only about a 0.1% difference between them. An electron, by the way, has a mass of only about 1 2,000th of the mass of a single proton or neutron. So, as I said, after one half-life, what started as 100 grams of cobalt-60 is now 50 grams of cobalt-60, since half of the cobalt-60 atoms have decayed into nickel-60 atoms. After another 5.27 years, that is 10.54 years later, half of the remaining cobalt-60 will decay, so you'll be left with only 25 grams of cobalt-60. Your sample will contain 25 grams of cobalt-60 and 75 grams of nickel-60. It's tempting to think that if half have decayed after the first 5.27 years, the other half should decay in the next 5.27 years, but it doesn't work that way. The number halves every half-life. After another half-life of 5.27 years, that is three half-lives or 15.81 years since the beginning, half of the cobalt-60 atoms you have left will decay again and you'll be left with only 12.5 grams of cobalt-60. Your sample will contain 12.5 grams of cobalt-60 and 87.5 grams of nickel-60. The process will continue for a long time and the number of cobalt-60 atoms will just keep getting smaller. This also means that the radiation given off by the sample will slowly decrease. Now in beta decay and gamma decay, the daughter nucleus and the parent nucleus have pretty much the same mass, as I said. However, that's not the case with alpha decay. Alpha emitters lose four whole nucleons, so the mass of a sample of an alpha emitter decreases by a small but noticeable percentage as alpha particles are emitted. Now I didn't want to make a big deal of it, but I just thought I'd mention it. The half-lives of different substances vary from tiny fractions of a second to billions of years. This table shows a few examples. By the way, the symbol used for half-life is T subscript a half. As you can see, uranium-238 has a very long half-life, so a sample of it gives off very few alpha particles and gamma rays per second, and it lasts a very long time. Fluorine-18, though, has a very short half-life. The atoms are very unstable, and so lots of decays occur per second. Notice how there is a huge difference in the half-lives of plutonium-239 and plutonium-238. A difference of just one neutron can change the stability of an atom in a big way. When it comes to half-life, it turns out that there are no obvious patterns in the proton-to-neutron ratio that allow us to predict what the half-life of a natural radioisotope would be. It can only be determined experimentally. Thanks for watching this short excerpt from the fifth episode of the Shedding Light on Nuclear Radiation series, Half-Life and Activity, some scenes of which you're watching now. The Shedding Light on Nuclear Radiation series teaches students what nuclear radiation is and how humans have harnessed its awesome power. In episode five of the series, we explain the related concepts of half-life and activity and give plenty of examples. Like all of Liakos Educational Media's programs, the Half-Life and Activity program comes with an outstanding student activity sheet. Click on the link in the description below to go to the Liakos Educational Media website where you can download the worksheet and also find out how to watch the whole program. Don't forget to like and subscribe. See you next time.